Welcome to episode number one of Quick Time Event, a fun new show where my friend Chris and I discuss video games and technology for the next half hour or so. Well, today we wanted to start by talking about Metal Gear Survive. Isn't this going to be so exciting with Metal Gear Survive coming out? I still I can't get over just how salty you are about like all things Metal Gear that aren't Metal Gear. Well, that's that's the thing with me is it's just it's Metal Gear, but I feel like it's too soon. Like this is just oh, you know, we just finally got done with the whole fiasco with Kojima leaving, and it's just oh, there's a new game coming out. And my my question is. What, what I'm sitting here is because of with MGS5 and what was rumored for cut content is the whole, wait, they had time to make this game, but they didn't have time to throw more money at Kojima to at least finish the last chapter properly. Like, that's where I'm just kind of salty with it. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, and I, mean, I, I don't think I'm the only one who feels that way about it. No, I'm, I'm not particularly happy about this. It just watching the trailer it was it's a mess it really is yeah i i i don't know looking at the trailer what kind of cracked me up too is they they kind of went for the vibe of what um some of the phantom pain trailers were like with trying to do the music and cinematics and everything but the heart of it just wasn't there and it's kind of funny because kojima would pick those songs that would go along with the trailers that they would make like um the the very one that's iconic for me is the one song the i can't remember who makes it but it's the we're not your kind of people i loved that trailer that trailer was absolutely everything because i'm i was coming off of um the peace walker hd and just being like yeah this is this is big boss this is what i'm ready for and they're trying to do the same type of thing with Survive. It's like, it has nothing to do with Big Boss. There's no point to the story. Stop trying to use the same cinematics. Like, it's not drama-inducing, like, for me. It's just, okay, who are these characters? Uh, should I even care about them? Like... No, these are these are probably the guys that you, you, uh, you know, abducted with your weird balloons. And you took them off to an oil rig somewhere, because that's how big boss works yeah he's balloon a, people yeah he's a, he's a fucking lunatic i would really appreciate somebody making a fan version of balloon fight you know a version of that where it's with the fulton balloons though I, I i would appreciate that if somebody made that i would play that that would be pretty awesome all right so for the one person who's willing to make that make that and yeah. then one person will play it yeah, just send send the link via Twitter to our account, which you can see right now, because we're going to throw it up there, because we have the power in editing to do that. Uh, you know, doing all this timeline manipulation stuff. Yay, broadcast, right? Barry, put, put, the, <laughs> put the thing up there. Okay, continuing on from Metal Gear Survive, uh, let's talk about No Man's Sky. And what, what what's going on with that? Oh, it... It's something. It really is. Uh, I actually had to talk Jenny into buying it because she. I figured, you know, she'd she'd enjoy that. It's it's a find shit and make shit game. Like it's it's a solo, not really survival crafting thing. And the hype train was unreal for years, and it was less than deserving of that hype it was it was not it was not good it was it was all right it was it was adequate but it didn't go above and beyond and just i i feel like it would have been a much much better had it been a curated experience as opposed to a a procedurally generated one because some of the animals you run into are just fucking goofy i've seen some of that stuff on reddit like you, and i'm just yeah i i don't understand it I, like yeah this seemed like an okay thing for the game to make like it's spore all over again for yeah some of those creatures yeah, pre well pretty much except you don't run into like scrotum monsters it's <laughs> it's like 
Oh, here's here's a giant reindeer god with two legs stomping around on what pig feet? What are, what is it? What is this? It's got wings. Uh, Why is it flying? Stop this! Stop it! I, I remember when um, I believe it was Sony showed it off, trying to show how they were being at the forefront of trying to bring indie devs on board with PlayStation Four and development. Yeah, and I remember seeing it, and for some reason, I I didn't think for what I thought that game was going to be is not what it turned out to be at all. Um, granted, I haven't played it. It was just the after that early marketing, I thought it was kind of an exploration thing, but I didn't realize it was as expansive as a kind of a deal. I thought it was more along the lines of what Subnautica is kind of being with the crafting and the wor- world yeah. and it all being actually crafted by hand and put in slowly kind of deal. I thought that that's what they were going for. This, I'm not a big fan of procedural generation. Never have been. Um, I've always seen things where it's just like... Yeah, you're defining rules, but at the same time, you're just letting it go willy-nilly, and you can't test it, all of it. Like, there's too many possibilities. That's why you're trying to make it so big, so how do you test every possibility? So, I mean, you get really weird stuff, but also at the same time, even crafted games get really weird stuff. Like, Assassin's Creed, you know, has had a few oh, yeah. issues in the past. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's not just that. I mean, you can't really... There, There is... If there's one thing that I remember from my computer science classes is you cannot test for every possibility. The there is no way you can you can test for the incredible ingenuity of morons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was talking to somebody and I said I was saying about um, traffic control. We were discussing highway systems and stuff. Mm-hmm. And when it's actually had to do with autonomous vehicles and the day that they fully arrive, um, 100% being fully autonomous, and ask, wondering if there would be like an HOV lane system for autonomous only, and saying, what would stop somebody who doesn't have one of those vehicles getting into it, just like people don't disregard HOV rules? And it came down to me telling them, yeah, you can't out-engineer stupid. No matter how much you try, you cannot out engineer stupid that it will find a way yeah it's 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 a lot like those fucking half frog dinosaurs life finds a way yeah yeah chaos theory yeah um going off of chaos theory uh things that are absolutely chaotic and going to professor chaos and the new south park game that's coming out wow not even an attempt at a segue no no i i'm wasn't even trying i just wanted to talk about this so much (laughs) um so for advertising at conventions they're doing this nauseous rift thing which i have to say kudos for them for taking probably one of the weirdest and grossest ideas and just going with it just they not even jokingly just oh maybe we should kind of do a joke, you know, marketing thing and just do something up in Photoshop, going a hundred percent in designing and trying to oh, create yeah. this thing. Like full bore. Yeah, that is some dedication to a joke about farts. Like, holy yeah. hell. So for anybody who doesn't know, it's the South Park fractured butthole marketing ploy where they've created a a nose virtual reality device type deal. To simulate the farts in the game it's just marketing which and it's fucking outstanding there's no expense spared like they they went all the way with it i yeah that's one of the saddest things is in that video it says not for sale because it's like well you know you know that would be a i pretty really good wanna, collector's edition item i really want to smell farts yeah it's well, it's just the it's the novelty of having something, right? Having something from a special edition, isn't that why they always do the limited edition things? Yeah, yeah no, that's fair. I guess that's it's kind of part of the reason why the, the Pip-Boy was such a big thing for yeah. Fallout 4. Yeah. Yeah. But the build quality was really not that good. I know, I bought one. Yeah, I stayed up late, and as soon as they announced it, I waited for Amazon to have pre-orders available for that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Was it not? Yeah. Was it not very good? It's it's not Okay, I have a problem in the fact that I have skinny arms and 
I really couldn't get it to sit, and with the plastic and everything, it was just very uncomfortable and cumbersome, so it sits in its box. Like, I still think it's very pretty, um, but at the same time, I was a little bit disheartened because it it is a, it's, you know, it's an add-on item. It's not meant to be very extravagant or build quality of, you know, high value. But at the same time, I expected a little bit more. I felt like it was easily a $20 kid's toy that was overpriced and really cheap plastic. It's, it was the plastic that got me. And so as much as I wanted it and got it, I've just been kind of like, well, I'm going to have to build one with 3D printing and stuff now because I really want one, but I want it to really look like it instead of just cheap plastic. I could try to segue again, saying human augmentation stuff and go into Deus Ex. And you said you wanted to talk about that? Jumping all around. Oh, hell yeah. So the new Deus Ex comes out uh, tomorrow, or I guess today or earlier this week, depending on when this goes up. And it looks fucking amazing, I gotta say. So some reviews are out, and all of the ones that I'm seeing are at very least positive i i cannot wait to play this game because the other ones the the past ones have been well with the exception of invisible war have all been about player choice and how you go about doing things and how that affects your story it's it's not so much the game telling me a story as so much as me telling the story what kind of me telling the game what kind of story I want it's always been really fun to be able to it's like oh I can murder everything between here and there I can completely ghost everything I can I can go through that vent I can walk up this pathway I can go around the building some other way I can jump off that building come over here it's the multiple pathways that have have always really made Deus Ex what it is and it's and this one looks like it's it's got all of that and more and it looks it looks gorgeous i got it it's so much better than the, than even the last one this doesn't look like it has the same animation issues in conversations that it had where you just have that one npc stock frame where they're like just karate chopping the air in front of you for no goddamn reason while they're talking about i don't know the weather and they removed the piss filter, which I really like. I know Jim Sterling has said that he he actually kind of liked that just because it added to the aesthetic of, of the whole cyberpunk theme. But I, I think I think getting rid of the the piss filter was was probably a good idea on their part. Going over like the cyberpunk kind of filters and what 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 have you um, in games. When Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon came out, that was, aesthetically, that was one of the most impressive things to me, was just that feeling and vibe with the um, the scan lines going on over the screen, mm-hmm. all the bleeding colors. I loved that. I, I thought that that was awesome, but granted, that was, that was a game that was catering for a very particular, ridiculous type of style, and yeah. it, it got that. And um, and to a degree, so was Human Revolution. But I, I think they would have done better had they gone with like the original Deus Ex uh, aesthetic, like the Blade Runner look. Yeah, yeah, a lot like yeah. a lot like Blade Runner. And then Human Revolution just kind of went, uh, well, why don't we try this black and gold thing? And it was it was neat. Uh, I think if they had just left it to like the serif offices just the place where adam worked then i think that would have been a really neat uh aesthetic choice but applying it to the whole game i think it just made everything feel not as as i guess vibrant is is a word that i want to use even though they're not exactly vibe it's not exactly a vibrant world it's it's dark and dingy and everyone's just fucking angry all the time about oh, that guy has augments, fuck him, or that person doesn't have augments, fuck that guy. I'm excited for it. It's It unlocks tomorrow. So Well, well, I guess when we do episode two, we'll, uh, we'll see how, how well it actually was for you. Yeah, we'll and see. We can, we can review this back we'll see. 
Um, moving forward, though, and talking about, I guess, cyberpunk, I guess it kind of fits in. Um, so it hasn't been a secret, you know, they, they announced it quite a while ago that Final Fantasy VII is getting a remake. Um, and they've been saying that it's not going to follow the typical format, and the fandom's been kind of upset because they a lot of people are clamoring, saying that they want the exact same game just with updated graphics, which... I, I really don't think anybody wants um, because as soon as you do that, if you don't offer anything different, like what's, I mean, you can do it with Steam. You can buy the game on Steam and there are so many mods to up, up all the graphics to higher quality models. But I mean, so there's that. I'm actually really excited for the idea that they want to do. Um, the real-time battle system, which is supposedly more Kingdom Hearts than Final Fantasy XV per se, um, I'm really excited for. I The Final Fantasy XV demo that they released, I really like the battle system. I like the control. I like the way it feels. It seems to make sense. I've always liked the Kingdom Hearts battle style. I always thought that as soon as we hit the, um, the PS2 era for RPGs, that was the best combination of trying to do, you know, uh, an RPG, but have it actually feel like you're in it and not slowly making menu decisions. I loved that concept. That that was perfect. Um, apparently, they're talking 2017. So I'm a little bit excited for that just because that will coincide with the 30th anniversary of Final Fantasy. So it would be kind of nice to actually go through all of them and have... Uh, the remake available at least game one I guess they're talking three three games for this dividing it like 13 was which can hurt them or help them I know from one of my friends that he he platinumed Final Fantasy 13 got every trophy which was insane because he had over 120 hours I think in it Mm -hmm. when all was said and done yeah um he bought the second one and played it and it was okay and afterwards he didn't even buy the third one because he just stopped caring he's like it went downhill so fast <laughs> and i'm afraid that that'll happen with seven it it might uh full disclosure i have never beaten a final fantasy game <gasps> yeah that's okay yeah, who thought that i would never sit down and play 20 to 120 hours of an rpg I think, actually, 7 is the only one I've ever beaten. Uh, I'm going to correct that. I'm planning for this next year to actually go through almost all of them. Um, So that's... Especially because, hopefully, fingers crossed, the 12 HD is going to be out next year. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's out early next year because the Zodiac Edition has me really excited because the fact that the license boards are restricted. And I loved 12, and I sold my PS2, and I sold my copy of the game, and I've been very upset since, and I know I could just go buy another one, but at the same time, they announced it, and I'm like, eh, HD, garbage. I'll take HD. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I've only ever beaten 7, but I've beaten it multiple times. Um, It's one of my favorite games. Yeah. Uh, speaking of 7, again, um, Resident Evil 7 is coming out. And yeah. And I guess they're planning to release it in January. Of, really? Uh, 2017. I, I hadn't heard that. That's the date that I was seeing. Um, that could be wrong. If it's wrong, we'll, we'll update you know, on the video saying that I was very much wrong. Um, now, I haven't played the demo. Chris, you said you had. I looked I at did. it, and just from the screenshots, all I could feel was PT. I, I think that's exactly what they were trying to go for. And I gotta say, it worked. It worked for me. Uh, I I went all the way with it. I closed the windows, like, headphones, darkness, just... And then I sat there and I played it. And there weren't, like, jump scares. At least none that I, I found when I was playing it. I was just giant baby man. And like shit my britches because that one dude was just standing in a corner in the basement you know Blair Witch style and it did it actually got me like legitimately hyped to play Resident Evil 7 which again that's another series where I've I've only beaten one of them I've only beaten Resident Evil 4 I've never even I've never played most of them 
but I, I really enjoyed them and watching other people play them. See, Resident Evil was a franchise for me that I absolutely loved. Um, and I had gone through the games like crazy. Uh, my uncles played it, and then they got me hooked on it. And I remember when 4 came out, because I got 4, I think, right as soon as it launched on the GameCube. And I would played that game nonstop and had to do everything in Mercenaries, which, holy cow, Mercenaries, trying to get everything unlocked for Mercenaries takes some time. Um, it was rough. Yeah. But, see, I, I played through all of them, and 4 was fantastic. I loved 4. Uh, 5 was all right for me. My issue with 5 was I had to play with the AI, which, from yeah. a lot of people that I've talked to, the AI is the worst aspect of that game and pretty much ruins it for single players, which it kind of did. Mm -hmm. um, I also didn't like where the story was going. It just kind of got a little bit more derailed. Played the demo for six. Couldn't do it. I looked at the story after it came out, and it, it was kind of like the Resident Evil movies. I liked the first movie. The second movie, I was kind of like, eh, all right. And then by the third movie, I was like, I don't care anymore because you have gone so far off the tracks that it's just... Is it, does it even, why even call it Resident Evil anymore? It's just something else now. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel like it has anything to do with what Resident Evil originally started as. But yeah, I, I, maybe I'll give the demo a try. I, yeah, I'd say it's definitely worth it. It's, it's a fun 20 minutes. Uh, I, you're not like me, so you shouldn't need an extra pair of underwear, but, well, like I, see, I straight up shat myself. Not see, a disclaimer, I, not literally. I was, um, I, I was thinking the same thing. And did you play the PT demo at all? I didn't. I, I watched, I think Markiplier play it, and then I watched, uh, the best friend Zaibatsu play it, and um, I, okay. I couldn't. So that makes makes me think that they kind of missed the mark for you to say that um, it was very PT esque. Um, just for me, because looking at it, I was like, ah, it's kind of like PT, like they were going for that vibe. PT was scary, like to me, absolutely scary. And I can do a lot of scary games. And I just, I couldn't. I was, there was something so unnerving about that game to me. Even my friend, who is an avid Silent Hill fan, and I like Silent Hill, I love the concept, but those games get me on edge every single time. Um, he was even like yeah it was he's stopping every five minutes just to calm down he's like no this is like the scariest damn thing i've ever played uh which you know rest in peace silent hills um really sad to see that one go uh yeah hashtag I'm, fuck I'm, konami yeah I'm, I'm holding out that still something will come of it eventually especially uh, since kojima has continued on doing his own thing um i figure I mean, we have no idea what's expected to to come out of, of this new game, it, which it's fine by me. Um, I'd rather have an unexpected thing from Kojima now than be like, oh, it's the next Metal Gear thing. I'm, I'm excited to see something new. Yeah. But at the same time, I was really looking forward to him and Guillermo teaming up to make a scary game because goddamn Guillermo del Toro can make some frightening things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I was honestly looking looking forward to it, uh, even though I probably never would have played it, or I would have bought it and then made Jenny play it. <laughs> you do this for me. I am too big, scared to yeah. do. Yeah, it, little little woman, play play this for me, so I can watch <laughs> you and then run away into the bathroom and just hide in the bathtub while, like, you know, monsters pop out at you. No, I'll. I'll I'll do all the screaming and crying for you. You just do all the manly shit where you're surviving all these horrors. So I, uh, moving away from this, I, I did something relatively recently that was a big reward for me, which was I finally beat Breath of Fire 3. Now, I bought this, my family bought this game back in 97, so it's almost been 20 years for me to beat this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's really not that hard of a game. It's just, it gets kind of grindy towards the end, which... Well, I mean, RPG, yeah, most all of them. Most of them back in the day were were grind fests. Unless you you were like a speedrunner back in the day, and you knew it's like, oh, hey, this glitch can actually get me by here, or I can use this item and 
Yeah. And it makes this fucking stupid easy. But I am going to recommend it for anybody who's a JRPG fan who hasn't explored um, that series, especially that game, Breath of Fire 3. It's turn-based, um, really interesting. One of the coolest... Okay, one of my favorite aspects about this game is when you are in battle, and mm-hmm. you know Final Fantasy picked this up later that you could do this, especially in 10. I, I, that's where I remember it occurring. Yeah. But um, when you're in battle, if you go to your items, you can actually change your equipment and it doesn't cost you a turn. You could just change your equipment. So if you have a sword that has a fire ability and you're fighting a fire monster, which dumb combination, you could switch to ice or something else, and it doesn't, and then still attack. Um, but it's a very neat setup. It's sprites, so it's all sprite based for the character animations, monsters, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous sprite work. I mean, let's throw up some images. Just look at this stuff. It's awesome. But the world is actually 3D models, and it has textures, sprite textures along everything. So it feels very sprite-based, but also pops out and has some dimension to it. It's, it is really, really pretty to look at. And I really wish somebody would make a game like this again. Not necessarily having it be turn-based, but um, just in this style. It's like Final Fantasy Tactics, I'd say, is, is a lot like it with how the environment was and the sprites for the characters. Mm-hmm. But yeah, highly recommend it. It's pretty fun. Um, don't go if you're trying to go for completion of getting everybody's ultimate weapons and whatnot. I would not advise against it. It to get the main character's ultimate sword. It's insane. Like I think the enemy that drops it has a drop rate of one in two hundred and fifty-six or something like that. It's abysmal. And yeah, it takes forever to do it, and it's a really hard enemy to begin with. So, yeah, um, speaking of turn-based, though, Pokemon Sun and Moon been announced, coming out sometime. Um, actually, I think it comes out in November. Uh, I'm pretty excited for it. I know my wife is, um, cause especially because she likes that cat, Litten, which is a fire type, I believe, if I am correct. It's the new fire type. But, yeah, another Pokemon game, another year, another ability for them to create more Pokemon and make more money, yes. of course. More goddamn Pokemon. That's that's what the world needs. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yep, all the Pokemon. Yep. Nope. I, honestly, at this point, just why? Just why? Why bother? Just get. Why? Why make new ones? Why? Why not just put them all on a single cartridge? Now, now, now the journey is just from what Kanto to whatever the fuck place Sun and Moon Moon takes place in. Like, why not just smash them all together? Uh, then you can actually become the Pokemon Master. Just have four hundred thousand Pokemon or whatever the fuck they have now. Uh, yeah, actually, I would I would be down for a game that you actually can go through every region and do every gym. It would be nine hundred thousand hours of playtime just yeah, to catch them all. A little bit too much. I, honestly, honestly though, it would be a little bit interesting to see that uh, concept used for something that's a little bit more, say online based more than what the games have already been so you know it's like a memorpago with it if they did it that way i think that'd be pretty interesting i think there's a fan creation that was actually trying to do that um but probably like most fan creations of a property that nintendo deals with quite a bit it probably got a cease and desist as soon as they found out uh yeah actually talking about fan created pokemon games uh pokemon uranium Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, like, it was online for all of like hours before Nintendo sent a cease and desist. Uh, I was lucky enough to grab a copy, and uh, I have not. I have yet to boot it up. It's uh, I've. I just need to bother enough to to start playing a Pokemon game again. Like it's, I have no problem playing them. But I gotta, I gotta get into it first. And X and Y just really decided, like it, it shed on me. Like I just, I couldn't anymore. The, the villains were just garbage. Oh hey, where you, you have bad fashion, so I'm going to destroy the earth. What? No, stop. What? You are actually insane. This is a fucking Austin Powers villain plot. 
See, you, you, I, I haven't played those ones, and I didn't even know what the enemies were, but you just kind of made me um, talking about the fashion thing. I just wanted to counter. I don't know if you've seen Kill a Kill, but I wanted to go nudist beach. <laughs> And, and yeah, for those of you who've seen Kill a Kill, hopefully you get a little bit of a chuckle out of it. Um, I, I love I love that show. I love Trigger. I loved Gynax. So, you know, that's uh, insane and inane kind of but, yeah. concepts are always fun. No, uh, at one but, point really in, fashion? in X, just to get this out of the way, in one point in X, like you beat somebody and they try to give you a Lucario. Like their Lucario is like, no, I want to come with you. I just left it standing at the top of a tower. I said, "Fuck that! I don't. I, no, I don't want your shit, Pokemon. Get. I, no, I don't want that in my party. I don't care if it's legendary or some shit. Just get it the fuck away from me." Uh, too much work to just get it and then put it in a PC box, huh? Yeah, I just walked away from it. Fuck it. <laughs> it's still standing there. Like I can go back into the game, and it's still fucking standing at the top of the tower, just waiting for me to put it in a in a goddamn Pokeball. And and if this were the anime. Uh, Chris would have been the guy in the first series, the Indigo League, where he leaves the Charmander on the stone and says he's going to come back for it because it was too weak. That That is who Chris is. That is, no. you are that trainer. No. I, I didn't leave it there because it's too weak. I left it there because it's fucking ugly. There's a difference. Oh, okay. I'm worse than that guy. <laughs> uh... Well, I think that uh, pretty much is a good point to leave off, you know, as you being a horrible Pokemon trainer. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, a plus, two thumbs up, Pokemon trainer. Yeah. Five stars. All right. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Quick Time Event. If you have any ideas for the show, please comment below. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Info Ouroboros. And lastly, if you like the show and what we do, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks and bye.